Hello there and welcome to another live chapter reading for Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Today I shall be reading from Cursed Sight, the Broderick Coven series, book number two, by A.J. Renee. Prologue. Aubrey Broderick ran the back of her hand down Ethan's down his soft cheek. My sweet boy, she whispered and swallowed past a lump in her throat. I'm so sorry I won't be here to see you grow into the special man I know you and your brothers will become. An unchecked hot tear escaped her eye as a heavy hand squeezed her shoulder. She looked up and shared a silent moment with her mates. They didn't have to communicate with words or telepathy to express the grief suffocating them as she neared the end of her seventh pregnancy. I'm so sorry we couldn't stop the curse, she managed to say. I'll never stop loving you, Easton declared before presenting his lips to her temple. She lowered her hand and pressed the spot where her daughter kicked. I have everything ready to bind whatever prowess Brandy may have. Ethan shook his head. We don't have to do this, Aubrey. I can. She may hate us for it, but it's for the best. We have no idea if the boys will even develop powers. And as a seventh generation of this curse, we have no idea what's to come. I can protect her, Easton hissed. Honey, I know you can protect them all, but without a true coven, it's too much. But Broderick Klein is an original family, Easton said in protest. She nodded sadly. That may be true, but you know the history as well as I do. After what Susanna did, they stopped trusting others. The Broderick Klein stopped practising like the olden days. Easton chuckled. There are enough of us to be our own coven. And while that may also be true, there are other Brodericks out there who could form their own coven. Instead, we've all travelled to different paths. Perhaps they might have joined their local coven if they longed to practice, but as it is, even you and I chose not to join another coven. The Broderick Coven will live on as its history and members integrate with other covens. I can teach them what they need to know. You can, my love, but small sparks of magic every few months doesn't make a witch. She looked down at her youngest son. The older boy's powers should be more noticeable by now. Easton knelt by the rocker and cupped Ethan's face. It's not fair that he'll never know you. It's not fair that you must raise them alone, she said and pressed her lips to his. I had a premonition today. Aubrey's brows narrowed as she pulled back to take him in. How can that be? Her husband was powerful in his own right, but premonitions were not one of his powers. He grinned at their sleeping boy. I'm not sure how, but I've been feeding Ethan while you helped Max wrap the wing of the bird you'd found. Well, tell me, she hissed, both annoyed and excited. It was only a spark of an image. Ethan with a beautiful red-headed woman. It ended before I could understand who she was. But in my heart, I believe he will find his mate. Chapter One Lipping the lock after her customer stepped outside, Serena Bishop leaned into the door and peered up. The full moon rose into the vast sky its glow lighting the small lot. She called out her quick thanks to the goddess for helping her with the tarot reading before she searched the shadows. Things were not right. A couple of months have passed since she witnessed the demise of Volarch, a high-level demon who had attempted to take another witch's power. Other demons and magical creatures were still behaving erratically. Just the other night a witch found a two-bar, a low-level demon wandering the streets without its human disguise. Blowing out of breath, Serena realised the curtain tied away from the door. She needed to figure out why there was such a sudden change. Her intuition said Vold Ark's death was not to blame. When she reached the small table in the corner, she grabbed her deck of cards and shuffled it. Her gaze moved to the shelf and the colour and a smile threatened to free itself. In a silk bag, the colour of the night sky, near another deck of tarot cards, a deck she had not touched since the last time he'd been in there practising. Ethan Broderick. It was Ethan's sister Brandy whom Volarch had wanted to strip powers from, powers unlike any Serena had ever borne witness to. Hell, Brandy was strong enough to lay a claim as High Priestess to multiple covens if she wanted to. Serena wanted to take out the threat of her immediately. But a part of Serena had been too stunned by the beauty of the goddess's gift. She tested the witch, partly driven by jealousy, and over time she realised Brandy truthfully did not want to claim Serena's position. If not for Ryan, one of her coven's witches, requesting Serena's help in the matter, she would never have met Ethan. Like his sister, his powers were new to him. Unlike his sister, he was an underdeveloped oracle. 
While Brandy could call all the elements and wield them like they were a piece of her, Ethan's gift of sight was exactly what her coven needed. There were few oracles in the world, having one to call upon would help Serena protect her coven. In the short time she'd worked with him, his powers had multiplied. Serena's smile disappeared and a frown tipped her lips downward. She could only imagine how much more he could have accomplished if they had worked together in the last month. Ignoring a strange twinge in her chest, she set her cards on the table and placed the large smoky quartz back on top of the deck. Waving a hand toward the door, she revealed her hidden protection charm and verified it had not been tampered with. Serena repeated this once more before putting out her incense. Her long skirt wrapped around her legs as she stepped into the private space in the back. She used it for readings, reserving the room below for her coven's work. Serena pulled the curtain closed, separating the shop into two, before turning off the lights and slipping up the stairs to her apartment above the shop. Ethan had obligations like the rest of them. If he wanted to continue broadening his gifts, now with the threat against his sister gone, he knew where to find Serena. She had never chased after a man, not that anything had happened between her and Ethan, and she refused to start now. Ethan's deep-set eyes came to mind as she wondered if they would meet again to practice magic. Her hand pressed against her stomach when a flutter teased below the surface. No, you're no longer a foolish young girl. Ethan is good for the coven. That's all, she scolded herself. The stairs opened into her living room. A love seat was pushed against the wall and faced one large window. The coffee table in the centre had stacks of books sitting on the bottom shelf and a lamp in the corner cast a yellow glow into the room. Two palms decorated the room as well as one large framed image of the moon overlooking a lake. Serena ignored the space and turned to her left. She passed a small U-shaped kitchen with an island and dark cherry cabinets, which looked nearly black in the light of the night. As she turned her attention, she would see a large amethyst geode on the centre of the countertop. She flipped on the light in her room, then paused by the nightstand and picked up the wooden picture frame. Peace and sadness whirled within her at the image. Her grandmother's kind and intelligent eyes were crinkled on the edges and a smile brightened her face as she hugged Serena's younger self. Mimi had been the coven's last oracle. She was a reason Serena felt she could help Ethan grow into his goddess-given gifts. Mimi had told her repeatedly not to mourn the dead, but they had found their peace. It was easy to say when a piece of you was not missing and filled with sorrow. Mimi was not only her grandmother, but her best friend, a staple in Serena's life, and then one day she was merely gone. No more calls or cups of tea, no more laughter or joy, no more advice or shoulders to cry on. She kissed two fingers and laid them against the glass before setting down the frame. I miss you, Mimi. All her hair on her body stood on end and she chuckled, all right, all right, she told no one. Pushing aside her morose mood, she lit a cone of Palo Santo she kept on her nightstand before making her way into the bathroom. It was not large by any standards, but it was perfect for her needs. A single vanity sat next to the toilet and the shower bathtub combo was across from it. In the corner was a small wooden cabinet, on top was an African violet with a large rose quartz stone in front of it. Serena stripped out of her clothes and braided her hair as the water in the shower warmed. She wrapped the braid into a bun and stepped into the water spray. Steam billowed as she inhaled the aroma of her lavender body wash. All thoughts of Ethan and Mimi pushed below the surface where they belonged. Serena relied on her magic to hold on to her peace, her routine provided her. Determined to have a restful night's sleep, unlike the weeks past, she slid into bed after drying. The cool sheets caressed her body and her long eyelashes fanned across the soft skin of her face. When his strong jaw came into view, Serena's lips pressed into a tight line. Somnum, she snapped, commanding sleep to take her under. Chapter 2 Holding open the door with his shoulder, Ethan rolled his carry-on bag onto his darkened apartment. With a push of his forearm, he turned on the lights, and as he juggled the mail, he cradled to his chest, he released the handle to his luggage and turned the deadbolt, the soft click sounding as it fell into place. If he were his sister, he could have done it with a simple flick of the fingers. It had only been a few months since he'd learned he was born to witches. Odd visions of things he'd never known, sh should have known or seen had plagued him growing up but they were never consistent. Since none of his siblings had reported experiencing similar things, he'd kept his oddity to himself. Ethan dropped the stack of mail, mostly junk, on the counter and laid his computer bag next to it. He had no intention of opening his laptop for a day at least, if not more. The resume sitting in his inbox could wait until the morning. 
exhausted from the last month of travelling city to city interviewing candidates weighed heavily on his shoulders. His family was his world and the only constant in his visions. Any time he worried over them or was he even was deep in thought about one of them, their faces flashed in his mind. The images never held for more than a second or two, but it was long enough to calm him. He should feel guilty for looking among them without permission, but it was never meant to be an invasion of their privacy. Everything had changed a few months ago when Brandy found herself in trouble. Now all his brothers knew their family secrets, and Ethan, like Brandy, was learning how to develop his gifts. Ethan rolled his luggage down the hall and into his bedroom. A California king filled most of his room and had nightstands on each side. Across from the large bed was his matching mahogany chest. After parking the bag next to his chest, he removed his cell phone from it and pressed the power button. No new notifications had come through outside of another work email, which in that moment did not count. Ethan ran a hand through his hair in frustration. A month had passed, one long month in which all he wanted was to call Serena. Every night, no matter what the hotel or city, he practiced calling his visions forward on command. He was fine-tuning his gift and she was the person he wanted to celebrate with. Except now that Brandy was safe and no longer needing Serena's assistance, he did not know if his call would be welcome. If he was honest with himself, his desire to call her had little to do with his powers. He missed the beautiful witch. Before he could stop himself, his thumb threw across his phone, Ethan. Back in town, coming by tomorrow so he can quiz me. Wink. He pressed the send button and stared in his text. What the hell is wrong with you? Ethan set his phone on the charger and undressed. Just because she helped you unlock the mess in your brain doesn't mean she wants to hear from you again. He shook his head and grabbed a clean pair of shorts. Blaming jet lag and exhaustion for his stupidity, he stepped under the cold spray of water and clenched his jaw tight. Her dark green eyes danced in front of him. Not in a vision, but a memory. Whenever he'd made a mistake, Serena would correct him, but her eyes were always filled with kindness and amusement, unlike the hard set that had faced off with his sister when they had met. If he let himself think too much on it, on her, he would talk himself into thinking he was the difference. Don't be an idiot, he told himself, and rinsed off the suds. She didn't feel anything. If she had, she'd have texted or called to see how you were. With a heavy sigh, he shut off the water and dried off. He called forth each of his brothers to mind and winced when he caught Junior mid-climax. A shiver of disgust rolled through him as his gaze shot to the red numbers on his nightstand. Ethan padded down the hall and decided he would not take the same chance with Brandy. He was sorely tempted to check in on Serena, but he could not take the risk of finding her with another man. When he reached the kitchen, he grabbed a glass and filled it with water. He leaned against the counter and crossed his ankles as he downed the entire glass. Regardless of how Serena felt towards Ethan, he intended on seeing her. Even if it meant boxing up his confusing attraction toward the woman, she was the first person in his life to understand him and what he knew to be his powers, and he refused to mess it up. Ethan shot up in bed, sweat shimmering along his skin. Blinking his eyes, he peered around his room, unseeing as the images from his dream faded. Nightmares were far from his norm, so he could not exactly call what that had been. The awful pressure on his chest and the feeling of foreboding, on the other hand, made his mouth dry with fear. Fear of what or who he didn't know. He rubbed his face and bent his knees, the sheet dropping to his waist. The staccato beat of his heart pounded away in his ears and chest. What the hell, he whispered and sucked in the breath. Ethan pinched the bridge of his nose and shut his eyes. A woman's bloody fist dropped, dripped onto the hardwood floor. Ethan's note flared as he focused on the image, his stomach threatening to revolt with each passing second. As hard as he tried, he could not identify anything but the delicate size of the wrist. Searching his mind, he found Brandy. She sat on Ryan's lap, a smile brightening her face. It chased away the darkness the dream had left inside him. Exhaling loudly, Ethan tossed aside the sheet and did not bother with the shorts on the floor. Another cold shower would be needed to chase away the tendrils of fear and wash away the sweaty remnants. Too early to leave his apartment and too late to bother attempting return to sleep, he made himself a cup of coffee. As the aroma wafted to his nose, Ethan thought of Serena. What would she say of the strange dream? He wondered, with a flick of his gaze to the microwave to with a flick of his gaze to the microwave's clock, he knew he would have to wait for his answer. Unable to do anything else, Ethan grabbed his copy coffee and unpacked from the night before.
I hope you enjoyed the chapter reading and that you'll go check out the book. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.